Hey there, hello, and welcome to my newest tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about the rope launches, the infamous rope launches. Um, they have become very important in the last few years, um, especially in the last year, and not a lot of people know how they work, or not a lot of people know how the, the special ones work, especially the one in the tutorial. So this time we're going to be talking about rope launches, and in my opinion, it is important to know how ropes work in general in this game. So, we're gonna just take a little look into how ropes work, and I actually um, prepared, believe it or not, believe it or not, I prepared a PowerPoint presentation for that. Yes, I did. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to be talking about ropes in general. There we go. Um, ropes, actually, if you look at them uh, on a very uh, on the surface, they're pretty boring. You can, you know, climb up and down. Um, but you can only do that in third person, so not in first person. And that actually sounds very simple and very unimportant, but it it is not. Actually, this will be very important later on. But uh, we'll come to this. And you can attach stranger by pressing action. Now that of course is obvious too, but that's very important. That's the foundation of how rope launches work. So let's take a look at ropes. I have a beautiful rope here. And um, the ropes in Stranger's Wrath are surrounded um, by something I call, for the sake of this video, uh, attached zones. So, if you're inside that attached zone, you can attach Stranger to the rope. So let's take Stranger, and if you uh, keep in mind, you have to be mid-air, so it won't work on the ground. If you walk and jump towards the rope, Ranger will attach himself to the rope if you press Action. Now. Keep in mind that the two arrows point in the same direction. That me it means if you are, for example, jumping, like if you are on a diagonal path towards the rope, you will attach yourself like in a diagonal fashion to the rope. I hope that's understandable. So that means to put it in short, the incoming and the outgoing directions affect each other. Or actually, the incoming direction affects the outgoing direction. That's more like it. And that's very important for rope launches as well. So, that's well, that's basically it about ropes. They're not that interesting. But uh, I think that is very important to know that if you are performing rope launches. So, let's take a look into rope launches. And of course, we again have our rope and our attached zone. And the two prerequisites for uh, a successful rope launch of course stranger is inside the attached zone and there is an obstacle between stranger and the rope that is important that is what we need for rope launches so what happens now stranger wants to attach himself to the rope you're in the attached zone and you press action so usually the game would say okay i want to attach stranger to the rope but that won't work because there is an obstacle. So what happens now is actually very interesting. The game now tries to attach Stranger to the rope by adding velocity, like building up velocity and speed over and over again. And the important thing about this is to know that it's dependent, uh, your frames actually uh, depend, no, the velocity depends on your frame rate. So the higher your frames are, the higher your speed is. That's why rope launches in ghost categories are way harder than in no ghost categories. With 60 frames it's actually pretty easy. It's not, you know, easy easy, but it's easier than in ghost categories. And what happens then is that the game uh, at some point can't handle the velocity anymore and it just shoots Stranger into oblivion. <laughs> and this is actually where we want to, you know, kind of control when and how we end this. Because we don't want to get blasted off, 
we kind of want to have control over where we fly. So let's get back to our game to show you some examples. Okay, what we have here is probably one of the easier um, rope launches. It used to be part of the any percent route. It's not anymore, but that's not important because that's it's just you know to show you a simple rope launch. And we are inside the attach zone, as you can see. I can attach stranger to the rope, and the obstacle inside the attach zone is actually actually that corner here. So we are going to be uh, sprinting kind of into the corner and then press control so that we can perform a rope launch. All right, let's do that. There we go. That was a rope launch. Pretty easy. Um, I'll just do it again to show you again. There we go. That was a little bit better. Okay. So, but you know this rope launch or this rope is actually used for the uh, no ghost category in order to get early McGee. So, um, kind of, if we just keep on pressing control until the game freaks out like that, we're just gonna be shot into the wall here into the fence. But we want to have control over where we land. So this is where um, it gets important to switch to first person. So remember the the image with the attached zone. Stranger is kind of in a state. When he's at the obstacle and when the game tries to attach Stranger to the rope where he builds up speed. And we can break that cycle by switching to first person. And that's what we use to kind of get the, the sweet spot where we can actually control where we're landing. So in this case, um, I'm having a lot of frames. I'm actually at 212 frames right now. So it's going to be very important to um, switch very quickly to first person, to third person, sorry. No, actually it's first person, but you know, to switch camera. So I'm going to try and do this right now. There we go. And as you can see, this changed my direction. And this changed my speed. And if I do this correctly, I'm a little bit rusty, um, it will shoot me to here. And that's perfect. And that's how rope launches work. You kind of have to, you have to be in the state where the game tries to attach Stranger to the rope, where it builds up velocity, and then you switch camera. And this, of course, is what brings us to the one of the hardest if not the hardest rope launches, but that's debatable. Um, of course, in the tutorial, uh, where we have that rope, but that's not the rope we use for the rope launch. No, it's this one up here. Okay, I'm gonna try this once. <laughs> that was a rope launch, but it was very ridiculous. Okay, so I'm gonna try and show you my setup here. This is maybe not the best for you, but it's the setup I use. All right. So uh, let's no, oh, let's start from down here. In the tutorial, I want to line up the rope exactly in the corner, like in between the two walls on the left and on the right, as you can see here. So actually, the rope needs to be right here. So like this, uh, like that maybe. And then I attach myself to the rope and then I try to keep that angle. I try to keep the rope between the two, um, like in the corner. And now is the, uh, the important part of my setup. It's I keep an eye out for the line on the left side of the wall. And then I climb up here so that the line on the left side of the wall is actually kind of in the middle of the brown spot on Stranger's hat on the left side. So that, you know, the line cuts the spot in half. And this is actually everything I do for setup uh, in any percent and in no ghost. Of course, the difference now is uh, the timing. 
timing uh, of switching camera. So um, I'm at the I have a ha I have a very high frame rate right now, so I have to be very quick with my angle. So I'm trying. I always try to go for like I I do a very late double jump, very late, get up like that. that. Ledge. Time to jump. It's very hard to get that, and uh, it's it used to be very frustrating. It's a lot of practices involved in there, and you do a light double jump, then you are inside the attached zone, and then you press control or action button, whatever that is for you, and then if you have a high frame rate, as quickly as you can, switch camera and press forward and right, because Another um, thing to remember is that in this area where you can see the area bouncing up and down, there's actually a trigger. And you want to hit that trigger while you're mid-air. So you want to hit that trigger and get high enough to land on top of the wall. And that's very uh, important. That's very hard to get, actually. Um, what might happen is actually that you're, for example, if you're going too far to the left, Get up that leg. Well, actually, that was pretty good. <laughs> but if you're too far to the left, you won't be inside the attached zone. And if you hold control too long, for too long, it will just shoot you Get up that leg. like that. Time to and you don't want to have that. Or maybe it's just... Get up that you would just fly off. Get up that like that, that. and then you don't even know if the area is loaded we'll see as it is I actually hit the trigger but sometimes you don't so to make it short line up stranger with the line on the left side of the wall do a light double jump and switch person uh, camera switch camera very quickly and then press forward and right that's what I do and this also works for no ghost, but you have to be, you can wait a little bit longer till you switch camera. Do that again. That was too far to the left and too short. Uh, that was actually the same, just a little bit. That could work, that was actually pretty good. There we go. So, in conclusion, I hope this helps with rope launches. Especially with this one. If not, please contact me. Just ask me. Everything I said actually is not kind of verified or anything. It's just something I made up out of experience uh, while running this game. So um, if you think something's wrong here or if something's um, debatable, just contact me. That's alright. Um, but other than that. Thanks for watching and I hope you can master rope launches now.